Okay, now coming to upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. Upper motor, all the pyramidal and extra pyramidal. Lower motor neuron are, we can say the anterior horn cell. The alpha motor and the gamma motor, they are the anterior horn cell. Okay, we can say that. So upper motor neuron lesion, what can be the reason for the upper motor neuron lesion? Mainly, either it can be the vascular, means if there is ischemia, ischemia is happening means loss of the blood supply okay or any space occupying lesion any space occupying lesion like tumor okay like tumor or if there is any sort of a transaction so mainly these two vascular and space occupying lesion now <clears throat> what can be the reason for the lower motor neuron lower motor it can be like there is direct cutting of the nerve supply to the muscle it can happen either due to the injury, traumatic injury, or it can happen either due to any sort of the infection too. Like in the case of the poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis, the anterior horn cell is affected. Right? The anterior horn cell is affected in the poliomyelitis. So alpha motor neuron, gamma motor neuron, they are the lower motor neuron. Lower motor neuron is affected. So if we cut the nerve supply of a muscle, what will happen to the muscle? Will it hypertrophy or atrophy? there will be atrophy. So in the case of the lower motor neuron, like in the case of the polio, there will be the atrophy of the muscle. That's the reason. So the difference is between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. This is very important question for your exam point of view too. Right. So the first thing, first and foremost is what I said, the muscle. There will be muscle vesting. There will be the muscle wasting in lower motor neuron lesion. But in the case of the upper motor neuron lesion, no muscle wasting. Why? Because the lower motor nerve supply to the muscle is already intact. There is problem with the upper motor neuron. That's one thing. Second thing is because <coughs> there is upper motor neuron lower motor neuron lesion, muscle wasting is happening. So that muscle wasting will lead to atrophy and when the muscle die there will be some sort of a fasciculation like vibration type of the feeling that will be present in lower motor neuron and it won't be there in upper motor neuron okay the second thing is if we remove the suprasegmental control what will happen to the muscle tone muscle tone will get exaggerated that's the cardinal rule of the neurology and we know because the medial reticular spinal tract and the lateral reticular spinal tract the medial reticular spinal tract that's coming from the upper pons neuron it is spontaneously discharging that's facilitatory but the one which is inhibited to the gamma motor neuron which was supposed to inhibit the gamma motor neuron to control the excitation from the medial reticular spinal tract that is not spontaneously discharging that is control from the cerebral cortex and cerebellum they will excite them so if we cut the section upper motor neuron lesion means lesion starting from the cortex to any point up to the lower motor neuron so if there is any problem within the cerebral cortex due to the less blood supply that's called as a stroke or within the internal cat stool okay there will be no control over the lower reticulospinal sorry the lateral reticulospinal tract there won't be stimulation so the gamma motor neuron won't get inhibited. They will become more and more excited. So that's why there will be spasticity. Spasticity or we can say the rigidity. Rigidity, okay. And in this one, there won't be any spasticity or we can say reduced muscle tone reduced muscle tone increased muscle tone and if there is reduced muscle tone what is the term for that flaccidity it's called as flaccidity that's the second thing now what about the reflexes that's the second thing the third one is reflexes and reflexes are what will happen in this lower motor neuron reflexes will be lost because the effector organ is the muscle and the final end neuron is lower motor neuron. If we cut the lower motor neuron, there won't be any contraction. So 
reflexes will be lowest and there are two types of reflexes one is the superficial other one is deep reflex both of them will be lost in the case of lower motor neuron lesion in case of upper motor neuron lesion there is a big <coughs> confusing part the the deep reflexes deep tendon reflexes they will exaggerated hyper reflexia but in the case of the superficial reflex it will be lost it will be lost in upper motor neuron lesion in lower motor neuron both will be lost deep as well as superficial superficial what is the reason in this one why the deep tendon reflex is getting exaggerated we know the gamma activation the gamma motor neuron discharge that inhibition part has been removed so there will be contraction what about the superficial what was the basis of the classification of the reflexes as superficial and deep depending on the location of the receptor in the deep tendon reflexes the sensory receptor for this reflex is muscle spindle and where exactly muscle spindle is located deep inside the muscle right when we hit the tendon with the knee jerk or anything happens it will stretch the muscle spindle then one a sensory fiber will carry the sensation okay and then alpha motor and gamma motor neuron will act and gamma motor neuron all these things are happening controlled by this one in the superficial what is happening in the superficial the example was flexor vitreal reflex right if you can recall back the flexor vitreal reflex like if you hit garam tawa wala yaad aapko hot pan when you touch it there will be removal of the hand so what was the sensory receptor for that pain right pain and temperature pain and temperature carrying sensation that is not present within the muscle that's present in the skin so it will be carried and alpha and gamma alpha motor neuron will ultimately make the muscle to that part to remove there is no association of the gamma one alpha gamma as that of the deep tendon reflexes that's why that upper control is lost the superficial reflexes will be lost because there is no gamma increased gamma discharge in this case okay so that's why the superficial reflexes will be lost now what else muscle atrophy in lower motor neuron flaccidity loss of both the deep and superficial reflex then there is one important point that the babinski sign babinski sign that will be present in upper motor neuron region what exactly is babinski sign if we stroke the outer edge just imagine my hand it is as my foot okay and this is the big toe and these are the small toes okay let's do it so when we start from the heel and with any blunt object and stroke the outer edge of the foot and move to the ball that part that metatarsal part of the big toe okay like this way try to do it on your own what will happen you will notice that there will be plantar flexion or that is called as the flexor response that will that is a normal response so in lower motor neuron lesion it will be normal why because this babinski sign is if we do this thing this stroking from the outer edge and up to this part then there will be dorsiflexion of big toe and or we can say the dorsiflexion of all the toes that's the one way of saying the babinski sign is present extends the response or some books say that there will be dorsiflexion of the big toe and fanning out fanning out of all the remaining four toes that's one and same thing okay so plantar flexion is normal if there is no corticospinal tract involvement because the corticospinal tract is the one which controls this flexion of the all the toes to any stimulus right but in the case of the upper motor neuron lesion the corticospinal tract is involved so there won't be any flexion there will be the extension
Okay, so Babinski sign is present means it is upper motor neuron lesion, or we can say one and same thing. Either the Babinski sign is present, or the response is extensor response or dorsiflexion response. Everything is one and same. Extensor or the dorsiflexion of all these things, or the dorsiflexion of the big toe and fanning out of the rest of the toes or the Babinski sign positive one and same thing. All these things happen in the upper motor neuron lesion. In the lower motor neuron lesion, it will be normal flexor response or Babinski sign will be negative or the absent we can say. Now, very interesting feature in this one. When the child starts walking, not just immediately after birth, it starts walking, almost it takes nine months to one year, right? So there are so many reasons why a human baby is not able to walk immediately after birth and out of those reasons one reason is corticospinal tract because for for anybody to walk if we like say imagine this is the foot and this is the floor or okay when we put it over here when we put the foot over there what will be the normal response there should be the flexion grasping should be there if you grasp only then you can move forward but if you can recall back the corticospinal tract it's myelinated and the entire myelination the complete myelination takes almost one year so in the newborn baby this corticospinal tract they are not myelinated that's why that response mode won't happen that is one of the reasons i'm not saying that's the only reason why the human baby is not able to walk immediately after the birth that's one of the reasons because the corticospinal tract they need to to get myelinated first before working normally, function normally. Okay, so that's the Babinski sign. Babinski sign. This is the Babinski sign or this is also known as plantar reflex. Like with the help of this blunt object, we will move starting from this point here on the outer aspect of the sole and reach up to the ball of the big toe then normally there should be the plantar flexion of all the toes but Babinski sign positive means when we do this thing this is the abnormal one abnormal plantar reflex happens what is happening in this situation growth great toe is bending upward it means it is getting dorsiflexed and the rest of the toes they can either get dorsiflexed or they will fan out this is called as Babinski sign or abnormal plantar reflex present in upper motor neuron lesion. There is deep tendon reflexes or hyperreflexia. So just imagine there is one more term that's called as clonus. Clonus. And what is clonus? Clonus is if you stimulate a muscle spindle and then remove that part, like that stimulus part is removed then that affected muscle will keep on contacting and relaxing on its own and it is clinically how it is performed like say this is a patient who is suffering from the upper motor neuron his hand what you will do you will push this thing upward when you are pushing it means you are stretching this muscle if you are pushing then you are providing the stretch to the muscle spindle that's the stimulus then alpha motor will act gamma motor will act and if you stretch it, push it for a few seconds, two or three seconds, and then remove it. In a normal person, what will happen? It will come back to the normal stage, the resting one. But a person who is suffering from the upper motor neuron lesion, if we do provide the resistance for a few seconds, two to three seconds, and just remove it, then this hand will be like, it will move up this way, up and down, right? That is called as the clonus. Why? Because that circulation, alpha gamma loop circulation has initiated it will keep on moving because the gamma motor neuron they are super excited hyper excitability is there so it will take some time for this to stop that's called as the clonus clonus is present in upper motor neuron lesion but it's not present in the lower motor neuron lesion so now we can say what are the features like what are the signs of differences between the upper motor and the lower motor neuron lesion one is the initial starting point there is muscle wasting in lower motor neuron or muscle atrophy there is no muscle wasting second 
what is what about the low motor neuron there will be the flaccidity loss of the muscle tone there will be the spasticity or the rigidity in the upper motor neuron region third one superficial reflexes are lost in lower motor neuron region upper motor neuron region are also lost fourth one is deep tendon reflexes they are exaggerated or hyper reflex in upper motor neuron region but in lower motor neuron region it will be lost that's the fourth what about the fifth fifth is babensky sign babensky sign is present in upper motor neuron region absent in lower motor neuron region now clonus is present in upper motor neuron region absent in lower motor neuron region now what can be the reason that we have covered you can also put that point the first point should be that thing like what is the reason for the upper motor neuron region the most common is ischemia or any space occupying lesion that involves the corticospinal tract mainly the corticospinal tract okay the pyramidal or the extrapyramidal anyone and in the lower motor neuron region any traumatic injury at the lower end at the spinal cord level itself or the nerve which is flying to the skeletal muscle or any infection like the polio polio is the most common infection we can say for the it is affecting the anterior horn cell so that's all regarding the upper motor neuron region and lower motor neuron region